Today's reading, um, it, we're still in the theme of sin, week two, and um, this reading comes from 2 Samuel. So we've, at the end of this, we've skipped from Genesis to Jeremiah and now to 2 Samuel. So Jeremiah gave us a sense of how someone and how God um, feels about sin and what the condition that sin leads to. So now we have a story that's also about sin, and it comes from 2 Samuel, chapter 11, beginning with verse 1, through chapter 12, verse 7. In the spring, that time of the year, when rulers go off to war, David sent Joab out along with his officers and troops. They massacred the Ammonites and laid siege to Rabah. David, however, stayed in Jerusalem. As evening approached, David rose from his couch and strolled about on the flat roof of the palace. From the roof, he saw a woman, a very beautiful woman, bathing. David made inquiries about her and learned that her name was Bathsheba, and that she was the daughter of Elam and the wife of Uriah the Hittite. Then David sent messengers to fetch her. She came to him and he slept with her at a time when she had been declared ritually clean after her monthly period. Then she returned to her house, but she conceived and sent this message to, to David, I'm pregnant. Then David sent a message to Joab, send me Uriah the Hittite, and Joab sent him to David. When Uriah came, David asked him how Joab and the troops were doing and how the campaign was going. Then he said to Uriah, go home and wash your feet after your journey. As he left the palace, attendants followed him with a gift from their ruler's table. Uriah, however, did not go home that evening. Instead, he lay down by the palace gate with all the ruler's officers. Learning that Uriah had not gone home, David said, Uriah, you had a long journey. Why did you not go home? Uriah answered, Israel and Judah are under attack. So is the ark. Joab and your officers are camping in the open. How can I go home to eat and drink and to sleep with my wife? As Yahweh lives, and as you yourself live, I will do no such thing. Then David said to Uriah, Stay here another day, and tomorrow I will let you go. So Uriah stayed in Jerusalem another day. On the following day, David invited Uriah to eat and drink with him and get him drunk. But in the evening, Uriah went out to lie down in his blanket among the ruler's officers and did not go home. In the morning, David wrote a letter to Joab and sent it with Uriah. The letter said, Put Uriah opposite the enemy where the fighting is fiercest, and then back off, leaving Uriah exposed so that he will meet his death. So Joab, during the siege of the city, stationed Uriah where he knew the strongest soldiers would be attacking. When the soldiers of the city ra rallied and fought against Joab, some of the David's troops fell, and so did Uriah the Hittite. Joab sent David a full account of the battle. He sent these instructions with the messenger. When you have finished briefing the ruler with this account of the battle, it might happen that the ruler's anger will be provoked. And he might ask you, why did you get so close to the city to fight? Didn't you know that, you would shoot, that they would shoot arrows from the wall? Don't you realize that that was how Abimelech ben Jerubaseth was killed? Didn't a woman throw a millstone on him from the wall, causing his death in battle at Phoebus? Why then did you get so close to the wall? If he asks you this, say to him, your servant Uriah the Hittite is dead as well. The messenger set out, and when he arrived, he told David everything Joab had sent him to say. The messenger said to David, the defenders overpowered us and came out against us in the open but we drove them back to the entrance of the city gate. But when the archers shot down at us from the wall, and some of your soldiers fell, and your servant Uriah the Hittite is dead as well. David told the messenger to say this to Joab. Don't let the matter upset you. The sword devours one as well as another. Press the attack against the city and destroy it. Say this to encourage Joab. When Bathsheba heard that her husband was dead, she mourned for him. After the time of mourning was over, David had her brought to the palace, and she became his wife and bore him a son. But David's actions displeased Yahweh. 
Yahweh sent Nathan to David. Nathan went to David and said, Let me present you with a case for your judgment. There were two people in a certain town. One was rich and the other was poor. The rich person had very large herds of cattle and sheep. But the poor person had only one recently purchased little ewe lamb. The poor person raised it and it grew with the family, adults and children alike. They shared their food with it. It drank from its own cup and even slept with family. It was like another child to the family. Now a traveler came to the rich person who went, out of, who went about giving hospitality to the traveler. But rather than taking one of his own livestock to prepare a meal for the traveler, the rich person took the little ewe lamb from the poor family to serve to the traveler. When David heard the story, he became livid and he burst out, As Yahweh lives, the rich person who did this must die. The rich person must pay for the lamb four times over. To do such a thing is evil. Then Nathan said to David, You are that corrupt person. This is what Yahweh of Israel says. I anointed you ruler over Israel, and I delivered you from the hand of Saul. I'm going to keep reading, even though our reading ends at 7. I gave you your palace along with your many wives and your arms. I gave you the tribes of Israel and Judah. And if all of this had been too little, I would have added other favors as well. Why did you despise the word of Yahweh by doing what you did, which is evil in Yahweh's eyes? You struck down Uriah the Hittite with the sword and took his wife as your own. You murdered Uriah with the sword of the Ammonites. Now, therefore, the sword will never be far from your house, for you show contempt of me and took Bathsheba to be your own. And this ends the reading of um, the word.